Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. We are now uh, pretty much close to ending the ninth week of lectures for this course. And I hope that all of you with me uh, have learned uh, several analysis and design techniques uh, for designing algorithms that will fly autonomous systems such as what we see in our background. Uh, what will be rather interesting and useful for me is to get feedback from all of you on the kind of applications that you envision using it or even start to use it. And I would really like to see some, uh, you know, testbed results at least on uh, how or the kind of improvement that you could uh, achieve using adaptive design methods. Yeah. So what we were uh, doing last time was essentially in this week 10 lecture notes and we had started looking at the notion of adaptive CLF, adaptive control Lyapunov functions, right? And um, we talked about the equivalence of the adaptive control Lyapunov function and the control Lyapunov function for the modified system. And finally, we also showed that if an adaptive CLF exists for a system of the form 1.1, then the system is globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable, which means that I can design an adaptive controller for system 1.1 which ensures that x and theta tilde states remain bounded and further that the x states converge to zero as t goes to infinity, right? So that's rather nice. So the power of um, ACLF is now, I hope, well understood. So if one is able to construct an ACLF, then, I mean, you already have, uh, you know, sort of achieved uh, a big, goal because just by using this aclf you can now design a uh, control line, right and it is also very uh, clear and evident in some sense right um, the alpha the, the control that the feedback law alpha uh, in this case is obtained just by you know uh, you can simply use like a um, arch time sontag type formula to get an alpha a stabilizing controller and the tuning function tau is obtained using this expression right in fact there's a clear expression for what would be the tuning function yeah so uh, so this is the cool thing right i mean uh, uh, the expression for the tuning function is clearly known the expression for alpha can be obtained by an archstein sontag type universal formula i mean of course you can do all of this intuitively it might be even better easier analysis wise but even if you don't you can almost automate it right you can have a computer compute these symbolically and simply implement it so having a uh, adaptive control Lyapunov function for a system or for a class of systems is a rather powerful uh, you know tool great now what we want to do is to move on to the backstepping version of things Right, because what does backstepping mean? It means that I add some integrator layers and I can still, you know, apply the same method. The adaptive integrator backstepping was essentially meant that I can design a controller for the first stage, but then if there's an integrator layer, then I can just move this controller to the second stage using a smart construction of a Lyapunov function. Here also, we do something similar. Right? Extended matching was slightly different, of course, because we did not actually declare a Lyapunov function for the first stage separately. We directly uh, looked at a, uh, constructing a, we directly constructed a Lyapunov function for the second stage, right? So that's why that's a little bit different. Yeah, and this is a little bit different. However, the point being that you can, uh, you know, you can do backstep, yeah? 
And that's what we want to do. We want to do adaptive backstepping via CLF starting this session. So I'm going to mark this. As lecture 9.5, right? This is where we are. And uh, so, so what is this? So uh, you are saying that you, if you have a, a system again, which is looking like the system 1.1, yeah, where x is the state in Rn, theta is the parameter in Rp, and the control is still a scalar control, right? Um, the system is said to be globally, adaptively, asymptotically stabilizable. Right. Um, uh, I'm sorry. If this system is globally, adaptively, asymptotically stabilizable, then the claim is that the system with the integrator is also globally, adaptively, asymptotically stabilizable. Right. So, uh, so anyway, so so that's what we will of course prove right? or try to prove. Right. Um, so so that's the idea. So the system 2.2, as you can see, is essentially an integrator version. So the control is replaced by the state psi, and then there's a psi dot equal to u. So it's essentially the standard backstepping form that you are used to seeing. All right, there's nothing uh, new here in the structure, right? Uh, so this is what we want to prove, right? That if I'm given that this is globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable, then I want to claim that this is also globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable. All right. So let's look at the proof. Okay. So if you know that system 2.1 is in fact uh, globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable, then you know that there exists a feedback, a VA and a gamma positive definite such that this sort of a relation holds. This is essentially the ACLF relationship essentially the ACLF type relationship. Okay. Now, what do we do? We use our backstepping idea, right? We know that uh, alpha cannot directly be applied because psi is not actually a control, but psi is in fact a new state. So we try to do the next best thing. We try to make psi to chase alpha. So we make psi to chase alpha. And how do we do that? We add a quadratic term in the Lyapunov candidate, right? So, so we consider this V1 or a, or a candidate function V1, which is essentially the same VA. Notice again that V, although I talked about adaptive, I am not really putting theta hat anywhere. Okay, I did not really put theta hat anywhere. This alpha, though I have not specified it, alpha is just x theta. So what we are going to try to prove is that uh, given VA x theta ACLF for 2.1, we claim that v1 x psi theta is an ACLF for 2.2. That's it. We are not going to worry about, because what do we know? We know that once I have an ACLF, I can design controllers and adaptive laws and all that jazz. Yes, I don't worry about unknown theta at all right now. I just worry about finding an ACLF. Now, because the system is globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable, existence of a VA is guaranteed. Guaranteed, right? That's what it means. Right? We already said that. Right? That if you have an ACLF, I mean, if the system is globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable, means the existence of such a VA function. Right? So, this is guaranteed. So, what we are claiming is that from this VA, I can construct this V1, which is just a standard backstepping construction. Because what do I do? I take the VA and then I add to it the backstepping error term, a quadratic in the backstepping error term. This is just psi minus alpha that's defined as a z, and this is just half z squared amplitude. 
and we essentially claim that v1 is in fact an aclf for this new system all right so how do we do that we just try to compute the aclf inequality right so what is this aclf inequality we want we essentially have this uh, let's see we essentially will show this okay so that's what let's be careful will demonstrate this inequality and how do i demonstrate this inequality i'm just going to take v1 and and take its derivative along this yeah v1 is a function of x psi and theta so all i'm going to do is i'm going to take the derivative of v1 along this equations 2.2 right because this is what uh, not along 2.2 but the modified version of 2.2 okay let's be careful here all right great so uh, we have assumed that psi dot is u is some alpha one so now uh, oh i'm sorry so what is the left hand side the left hand side is essentially the v dot for the modified system so that is del v1 del x right times fx plus cap fx theta plus this guy plus gx psi right and del v1 del psi times psi dot which is alpha 1 all right so that's it uh, let me verify if this is correct correct so this is del v1 del x times the modified x dot if you may the modified x dot if you may and uh, del v1 del psi times the current so this is what uh, should be the case i believe this is what should be the case i believe the modification is basically theta plus gamma del v1 del theta transpose right it is now del v1 del theta transpose right is this quite correct is what i'm wondering so if i write this system out carefully i want to write it a little bit more carefully xi ddt is and the drift term is fx plus gx psi and zero plus the parameter term is fx zero times theta plus the control term is zero one times u so for this system uh, if i want so this is my sort of this f prime and this is f prime and this is sort of my uh, sorry this is not quite yeah sort of my g prime so what i will have is everything remains the same but this gets modified right so technically this should be uh right so this should be if i was to write this carefully uh, i have to be a little bit careful i'm sorry and uh, this may not so this is this should be del v1 del x times uh fx plus gx psi 0 plus fx uh, um, fx 0 times theta plus gamma del v1 del theta transpose 
plus 0, 1, alpha 1. And this should be multiplied not by just del v1 del x but by del v1 del x and del v1 del psi. So is this correct is what I'm thinking. Yes, yes, this is what it should be because if you look at, I'm just trying to make sure this is precise. I think it will come out to be the same expression, but I want to make sure this is the correct expression. So what do I do? How do I get the modified system? I just take the original system and just in the term connected to the parameter, I make this change, right? And so then everything is multiplied by the del V a del X. Now, in this case, there are two states that V1 depends on X and Psi. Therefore, there has to be, I apologize. I, therefore, there has to be del V1 del X and del V1 del Psi. Right? Correct. And the states, again, the term in the theta is just modified. Everything else remains exactly the same. Right, everything else remains exactly the same. So I really hope you can all see this. Right. And this essentially I believe boils down to exactly this guy. Because this will give me del v1 del x fx plus gx psi plus del v1. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Essentially, this from here I will get this. Yeah. So essentially the same thing, just that this is how it's been obtained. So this term has been obtained using this kind of a cal calculation. Okay, I hope this much is clear. Yeah, I wanted to make this more precise here. All right, great, great. So uh, yeah, so the, basically yeah, we want to show that this is an ACLF. So now we evaluate the left hand side more carefully, right? So how do we do this? So again, so this is a correct expression. This is correct. Yeah. I was just not sure if, if if all the terms are correct, so I just wanted to write the original expression. All right. So uh, if you look at the left hand side, what I can do is I can write partial of v one with respect to x and partial of v one with respect to psi in terms of the components using this expression right here, right? And that's what we do. So del. Uh, so if you look at this expression here. Uh, from here you can write del v1 del x is basically del v a del x uh, and is there anything else uh, yeah minus sorry plus z times or actually minus z times del alpha del x yeah and similarly del v1 del psi is equal to z times del no del v1 del psi is just z is just z i think that's correct so this i can substitute for here yeah so this is del v1 del x and this is del v1 del psi. Yeah, this is del v1 del x. So that's what we do. And this is also del v1 del x right here. Uh, sorry, this is del v1 del theta, I believe. Right. So we also have del v1 del theta in the expression here. So del v1 del theta is equal to what del v a del theta minus z del alpha del theta okay very similar so this expression and this are very similar and del v1 del psi is just z so all of this is just computed from this expression okay and so then we substitute all of that here Okay, once we make this substitution, uh, we again know that 
some relation on del v on v a right and so we write that out so we know that del v a del x plus f x f x theta plus gamma del v a del theta transpose so i i'll tell you which terms we take we take this guy along with this this and this term and uh, this gx times psi is written as gx times z plus gx times alpha so we take this term so all of that goes here okay and then we are left with uh, these terms the del v a del x along with this guy this guy and this guy that goes here right right then i'm left with the entire uh del z a del x terms that's here and this term uh is is just taken as it is this term is taken as it is right and now what do i know by our aclf result i know that this quantity is of course minus w x theta right uh, and then i have uh, again taking z common with this i have alpha 1 minus all of this mess yeah so i so you can see that the good thing you can see is that all the other terms contain z in it apart from this guy in red apart from this guy everything else there is a z here in the end there is a z here in the end the z here in the beginning and there is a z here so I can take the z common in all the other terms. That's what I do. And I get this big expression. So now if I choose my alpha 1 to cancel all of this. Yeah. Because again, remember, as of now, we are not talking about theta being unknown or anything like that. Theta is completely known. Okay. So we can use theta. So everything is known. So I cancel all this mess, which is what is all of this. Yeah. And then I introduce a good term, right, in the z. Right? And once I can do that, I know that I'm left with v1 dot as minus wx theta minus z squared, right, which means what? This is also turns out to be negative definite for all theta in x comma z, right? So this is a ACLF because it is a CLF, right? Because if you got the derivative to be negative definite, it means that V1 is a CLF for the modified system, right? By choosing an appropriate alpha 1, of course. So if you could choose a one alpha 1, you when you take an infimum over all possible u, that is again smaller than, necessarily smaller than this, or necessarily not larger than this at least. And therefore, you have that V1 is a CLF for this modified system. And if you v1 is a CLF for the modified system, it means it's an ACLF for the original system. Right? And what was the original system? The original system was this guy. Okay, so that's pretty great. Right? We have essentially been able to prove that uh, the, if the original, uh, if the system 2.1 was globally adaptively asymptotically stabilizable, then so is this guy. Why? Because from the ACLF for this system 2.1, I could construct an ACLF for system 2.2. This is by modifying the control alpha 1 and choosing V1 in a smart way from VA. All right. And that's that's great, right? That's essentially what you want. Yeah. So this is what you need in you know typical backstepping adaptive control, also, right? So just that we are we now have a different sort of expression. Right. Now, uh, what would be the control law? The control law is alpha 1. We just computed it, complicated. And what would be the tuning function? Now, this is interesting, right? The tuning function is has a proper expression, right? Because we already have an expression for the tuning function. It is the partial of the ACLF times F. F is the term multiplying the unknown in the dynamics. In this case, term multiplying the unknown in the dynamics is this guy. And the ACLF is this guy. So what do you have for the tuning function? It is partial of V1 with respect to both states, which is basically, this is the same as saying.
times F0 term multiplying the uh, unknown and if you actually compute this yeah the second term goes to nothing so I'll just have del V1 del X F and again I can expand del V1 in this form and so this is essentially my tuning function for this integrator system okay so, uh, so if you want to look at extension to again set point regulation and tracking problems you have to look at the KKK book and this is the reference section 4.2 and 4.3 um, so this is essentially the tuning function design method what we want to do is of course we want to uh, look at some examples also in the subsequent sessions that is the idea so let's we will do that uh, you know uh, but but just to summarize what we did in this session is that we had started we had already looked at aclf ideas in the last session in this session we uh, essentially wanted to look at the extension of the aclf idea to uh, back stepping that is when i add a integrator layer right then how do you apply the aclf idea is what uh, we wanted to look at and we did we actually proved that if you have an uh, adaptive uh, clf for the original system then if you add an integrator you can construct an adaptive clf for the integrator system using the original aclf itself right and we also showed how this is an aclf by slightly modifying the feedback law and of course we can then construct a nice tuning function which will help us construct the parameter estimator also right so what we intend to do you know in the subsequent session is to take up the same example if you remember uh, we had taken up an example for an unmatched uh, case and we solved it using the adaptive integrator backstepping and also the extended matching method now we want to solve the same problem using the tuning function method also and so that is what we will do of course we'll try to get the aclf motivation from the earlier examples and so on and so forth but yeah essentially we will um, you know uh, that's sort of the uh, problem we want to work out and because it is a vector problem we are again hopeful that well, we can do a good job yeah um, so that's what we'll try yeah we'll try to so solve that particular problem in the vector context and we'll try to design a tuning function based adaptive control law and try to compare it with our other two case control adaptive control laws all right so i hope all of you will join me again in the next session uh, and yeah and i hope you enjoyed whatever we discussed today so these are one of the more advanced methods of adaptive control and um, rather useful methods also all right great so this is where we stop thank you mm -hmm.